Hello, my colleagues, who change the world with your words. In this second series of videos, I'll be concentrating on the things that we don't learn formally, but that are crucial for meaningful teaching and learning, like changing the world with words. Just think about that. It's very powerful. It has always fascinated me that in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, which traces the creation of the world, there is no record of God doing anything. He uses the power of his voice to speak the world into being. Sound is infinitely powerful, and it is what we ourselves use when we teach. When we do it well, we speak learning into being. We speak our learners into wanting to know more. We transform worlds. If this is the biggest tool that we have to encourage learning, shouldn't we make sure that we are using it consciously, well, beautifully, and with purpose? This fascinated me, and I did a little bit of research Rogerson and Dodd completed research into the quality of voice and its effects on learners. And they showed that when learners struggle with the sound of a teacher's voice, they understand less and they respond less positively. Remember that hearing and listening are two different things. Fairfield and Rogers found that one third of the teachers in the United Kingdom, one third, had problems with their voices. A quick internet search reveals that vocal cord nodules and vocal cord polyps are frequently diagnosed in teachers, and both of these are caused from over, overuse and vocal strain. Years ago, I came to realize that when I speak louder than normal, my voice acquires a harsher tone, becomes more strained, and I'm less expressive. I consciously work at this when I teach in face-to-face -face situations and I try to become aware of the quality of the sound that I am producing. Often, we're so busy teaching that we have little time to think about the way in which we are doing it or the cost that it is having on us. Our voices stretch, strain and sometimes even break. In 2017, Mycroft concluded that we strain our voices less and our vocal pitch is lowered if we talk while we're standing up and are adopting an upright posture. This is such a simple piece of advice that we tend to forget it, but it really works. Technology makes it so easy for us to do our own research and to become aware of the kinds of sounds that we make in our classrooms. Just put your cell phone on your table, press the record button, and continue with your lesson. When you're at home, reflect a little. Listen to the recording as if you were a learner in your own class, and ask yourself some critical questions. Is this voice something that is pleasing to your ear? Does it make use of interesting intonation? Does it sound inviting? Does it invite listening? If sound is our most powerful tool in the classroom, shouldn't we acknowledge that power and make it even more powerful by using it consciously? And shouldn't we care for ourselves by using it properly? so that we don't end up with strained vocal cords and sore throats. When I was working in an on-site university, I sometimes had more than 100 students in one crowded room. They could generate an incredible noise. I consciously spoke softly, using my body and facial expression to convey meaning, and they always settled down without me having to yell. I suppose the choice is really ours. We can use our voices like weapons, or we can use them like instruments to build. We can speak our learners into wanting to know. Now, how does that sound? Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again.